Assalamu alaikum everyone. Uh, just to briefly introduce Dr. Hani, not that he needs an introduction. Dr. Hani is one of the alumnus of the University of Birmingham, uh, and he was one of the co-founders of Islamic Relief, which is the largest uh, Muslim charity in Europe. So, hand over to him. Alhamdulillah, uh, 30 years ago, I finished my Doctor of Medicine in Birmingham University. My subject was, any medics here? Stand up, please. <laughs> what do you want? How many medics? Stand up, please. Stand up, please. Only two. Only three. Only four. Only five. <laughs> All right. Not bad. Be seated, please. When I came to England, when I came to England 42 years ago, I had no plan to be a part of any charity or any community work. I came as a young doctor and I wanted to do my membership or fellowship to earn more money. To have a clinic, private clinic, and go back to Egypt where I came from and to be a rich man, to marry a beautiful woman. You like it? Uh, can you fix him, please? Come on. Can you go up the ten, ten round, please? Have you seen him? <laughs> Can any one of you propose him? Please, very happy. Please, fix him tonight, huh? <laughs> Mr. Doctor. This was my intention, just to get a clinic and to get married and have uh, good income. But Allah was planning something else, totally different. When it came in 1983, the big famine in East Africa, in Eritrea and Tigray, we discovered that we don't have any organization to stand up and to respond to this calamity in Africa. So as young medical student and my colleague was doing his PhD in chemistry in Birmingham University, we have this idea to go out and start raising funds. So Islamic Relief was born out of the womb of ISOC, Birmingham University in 1984. So you have to be very proud of it. First donation was raised from Aston University, 250 pounds. When I came back from Egypt, January 1984. Second donation came from Birmingham University, the same. But the first, first donation came from Egypt from my family, 1,500 pounds. This is how we started. Very little, no office, no budget. No plan, no strategy, no big things which you think it makes a success at the end of the day. Be simple, objective, focused, dedicated, committed, believing in the cause. No matter how much have authority you have, how much fund you have, how many people with you, you will be succeeding. You will be succeeding, and you will be succeeding. And if you fail, know that your failure is a part of your success. If you fail again, know that your failure again and again and again and again will make you more successful. But keep trying. It's a never-ending story in this life. I am against a world called volunteerism. Because we live for a mission. We have been born for a mission. 
we should accomplish our mission in this life and once we accomplish it we have to start another mission when you excel don't stop excelling when you achieve don't stop achieving when you rise don't stop rising when you be elevated don't stop being elevated and elevated and elevated because there's no end sky is not your limit sky is your beginning as a muslim sky is your beginning don't let anybody tell you sky is your limit the universe the galaxies the dimension of the horizons horizons that we know and we don't know are our boundaries but not limits we don't have a limit in this life to live for your, your heart you know sister your heart about 230 gram but has the capacity to have more than 7 billion people living inside it because your heart is so big in the dimension of the capacity that has been given to you by Allah to have everybody inside it because you dream about humanity this your prophet was dreaming about humanity and was putting the humanity at the back of his mind and in his heart dreaming how to save them and this is our mission in life our mission is a never ending never ending never ending successful story we don't accept anything but excellence not only success we got our PhD so what we got MD so what we got master so what we become professor so what so what keep saying so what because you have to be increasing the capacity of your productivity to humanity and this is your role with the time of technology you can do more then what we're doing we do not have a telephone no mobile no cars no internet no wi-fi no 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 but you manage to do it for you you have to do as much as 100 times as has been achieved before and more because you have the vision you have the drive you have the commitment, you have the dedication, you have the direction, you have the belief that you are the custodian of the universe, not only of earth. You are the custodian of the universe. You are responsible for it, sister in the middle. You. You, you, you. The one next to you, sister, in, in the orange. <laughs> you are, you are actually the custodian of the universe. <laughs> that will make it like this. She is the custodian of the universe if she believes in herself. I'm very happy to see Hudaida and Taj in your presentation. I have visited this place many times from the 95 up to two years ago. Yemen is an ugly scar on the face of every of human being. Very ugly scar. Whether we like it or not, whether we believe in it or not, whether we take it or not, it's very ugly scar and it's a crime against humanity by all the dimensions of being saying this is a crime what's happening in Syria what's happening in Yemen what's happening in all for the Uyghur in China for the Rohingya isn't it what's happening in Kashmir and in India crime 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 against humanity you have to prevent these crimes happening again 
If we fail to stop it, you prevent it. You know this flower? It's not my wedding flower. <laughs> it's not my wedding flower. It's not my daughter's wedding flower or my son's wedding flower. It is the peace and love of the Bosnian people who were massacred badly in 1995 in a city called Srebrenica with another ugly scar against humanity by the Dutch UN forces who gave the city to the terrorist Chetnik from Serbia. When they killed mercilessly nearly 11,000 people, 11, people. Every year they keep discovering the remains of the bodies. Last year when the city were discovered 33 or 35 remains, one of the remains of the bodies was found in seven different locations. So you can imagine how cruel people were. Action against humanity, against mercy, against religion has nothing to do with the religion, has nothing to do with Christianity, has nothing to do with Islam. This terrorist activity this year is the 25th anniversary of Srebrenica massacre. And I, are you, are you Birmingham? Where's the, where's the Aspen? Aspen. Come here, give me your, where's the, your, your chairman, your, your, your boss. So. <laughs> Come here, both of you. <laughs> He's getting married to me. This one, yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. Yeah, it's today. You are married to me. Yeah, it's <laughs> okay. <laughs> I could not have uh, imagined I am going to stand with this generation, next generation. Because we, when, we, when we came here as foreigners, as foreign students like myself, there was no undergraduate from the local community. But you are now. So between me and you, at least there's two or three generations. Your task this year is to organize a Srebrenica visit to commemorate the 25th anniversary, which happened, unfortunately, 9th, 10th, 11th of July, 1995. It is like the concentration camps. It's like what happened to our Jewish brothers and sisters in the Second World War by the Nazi. We should stop it to having any community, to any society, to any nation, being Muslims or non-Muslims, being black or white, yellow or brown, anything, believing or non-believing. And this is your task. You have the power of technology. Use it. Don't be used by it. Use it. Don't be used by it. And this is your age. The age when you use the technology to speed up your progress, your development, and to build what people failed to build. In the good old days, in Birmingham University, at Aston University, <laughs> Ask Martin Luther King, the whole of Martin Luther King. Or did he go to Aston as well? <laughs> <laughs> well, they were crying to get 50 or 20 people to come to the hall. When, when, when we used to do the Islamic... Uh, Islamic week? Islamic discovery. Yeah. No, 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 don't go to discover Islam. The Islamic society week. <coughs> we used to go around to keep pulling people from the campus. 
is commandant. He is commandant. But nobody is at him. But alhamdulillah, I am extremely happy and very motivated and uh, very empowered tonight to be standing amongst you. I'm a little bit looking tired, isn't it? Can you see me tired? <laughs> we just came back from uh, nearly four weeks journey between South Africa, Sudan, South Sudan, Somalia, and Ethiopia. In one shot. And I want you to do better than that. Five countries, so what? Ten countries, so what? Twenty countries, so what? Keep doing it. Somebody like myself, at the young age of myself, they're all too old for me. I thought you still a student. No, no, I'm still in second school. <laughs> If, I, if somebody like me can do it, you do better. You must do better. And this is the challenge between me and you. You know, if you want to live forever, you will live for others. If you want to live your life, live for yourself. But our life should be a never-ending story of success, achievement, and excellence for others. Once we serve others, we serve ourselves. And this is our mission tonight for all of you. I beg you and I pray for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but he make you the best among the best. Don't take volunteerism as weekend or as two hours in the evening. The whole world is in a very shambolic situation, as you can see nowadays. Very chaotic, and most of the problems affecting Muslim populated countries. Muslim people and the task amongst us, not only you, amongst us, is to reform what they spoiled and to build what they have destroyed and to stop the atrocity and bring justice to humanity by you, by you, and believe me, if you believe in it, you do it. If you want to believe in it, believe in it. But you will do it, inshallah. Jazakumullah khair. I'm very honored to be standing next to you. And both of you, inshallah, and all of you. And I wish to go back to the 80s and to show you the good golden days of walking, taking the buses. No telephone, seriously, no telephone. We used to go to distribute, leave this door to door, mosque to mosque, shop to shop, street to street, without being tired. You know why, brothers and sisters? Because you love what to do. If you love what to do, you will never feel tired. And you will do what other love. And if you do what other love, they will do what you love for you. In the continuation of the cycle of love between you and the other, and the other than you, this is built in your heart. Because as I told you 15 minutes ago, that the capacity of your heart can have more than 7 billion people. Apart from the other creation of God. You know why? Because this is the dream of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam didn't only came to save Arabs, 
for Muslims, but he is forever, he is forever saving humanity. And you should be forever saving humanity. And put humanity in your heart. Because your heart and has a capacity more and more for the humanity itself. Thank you very much, Birmingham, <laughs> Astor, and uh, Manchester United. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>